Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Akanksha, and I'm a product designer and a developer. I'm here to talk to you about my plugins today, the Perspective Grid Generator and the Fractal Glass Effect. The Perspective Grid Generator lets you quickly create grids at an angle without manually drawing every single line in the grid. The Fractal Glass Effect lets you create vertical ribs that add a glassy look to your images. Now, both of these functionalities can be achieved in traditional graphics editing tools like Illustrator or Photoshop, but those tools are hard to use. And it requires switching tools, which isn't fun when you're in the middle of your workflow in Figma. These plugins bring those graphic editing functionalities to Figma so you don't have to constantly context switch or learn a new tool. In today's talk, I'll show you what inspired these plugins, how I built them using the Figma API, and lastly, we'll make a few live edits to these plugins just to see how flexible the API is. So let's jump in. Starting with the perspective grid generator, the inspiration for this plugin came from noticing how so many brands and products were using perspective grids as a part of their visual identity. Here's Robinhood using a neon perspective grid in the background for some of their crypto product pages to create a retro, retro futuristic vibe. Vercel also uses Grid as a very foundational part of its visual identity. This year's Google I.O. also made extensive use of perspective grids in its event branding. And so did last year's config. So when I was working on one of my own projects, which involved designing a website, I thought it would be nice to have some kind of a perspective grid in the footer to add a little bit of visual weight to the section. So I started drawing my own perspective grid in Figma, manually using the line tool. And it wasn't long before I realized that it's not just a very time-consuming idea, it's also really hard to fine-tune. So if I want to make the grid a little more dense, add a few more lines, or slightly change the angle to make the grid wider, it's going to require a lot of manual adjustments. And I thought to myself, there has to be a better way to do this. This can't be it. So I looked around for plugins and community files that could help me create these grids faster and more easily, but found nothing that was remotely helpful. So that's when I created the Perspective Grid Generator plugin for Figma. The plugin comes with a very simple interface where the user can select the number of vertical and horizontal lines they want in the grid. They can also adjust the angle for how narrow or wide they want the grid to be. And then with a single click, the perspective grid is generated on the, on the canvas. So how is this grid made? Now, if you remember the plugin UI, the user provides us with the number of vertical and horizontal lines they want in the grid, as well as the angle. So using the number of vertical lines and the angle values, you can derive a formula for the angle change for each of the vertical lines. It's the difference between the last angle and the first angle divided by total number of lines minus one. Pretty straightforward. Similarly, using the angle and the horizontal line information, you can figure out the width decrease formula for all of the horizontal lines. It's twice height into tan theta divided by total number of lines minus one. But to be completely honest, my high school math memory had given up far before I got to this point. I was constantly asking myself, what's tan theta supposed to be again? Uh, but thanks to some Googling and chats with GPT, I was able to forge ahead and come up with a basic logic for making these perspective grids. And once I had that logic figured out, I used the Figma plugin API to bring these actions to life. I specifically used the create vector function, which allows you to draw vectors on the canvas and then manipulate their properties, like the X position, the Y position, uh, the stroke, height, weight, color, basically all the properties that you see on the right side pane in the Figma Editor UI. Now let's see how this works in practice. So 
So here's our perspective grid generator plugin. Let's bump up the number of horizontal and vertical lines a little bit. Let's make it a little more wide. And as soon as I click Create Grid, there's a grid on the canvas. Thank you, thank you. Now, if you look at the code, there's two main sections here. The first section is responsible for all the vertical lines that you see in the grid, and then the second section is responsible for all the horizontal lines. You can also see the X and Y positions for these lines being defined here, along with the stroke weight. Now, let's change the stroke weight here to be a little more heavy. And then right under that, you can see the color for these grid lines being defined. Right now, we're using a lighter gray. Let's make it a lighter purple instead. Let's do the same changes for the horizontal lines. And now when I create the grid, you can see the new styling changes I've applied. The grid is a lot heavier because of the stroke weight increase, and the color is light purple. So that was all for the perspective grid generator. I'd now love to show you the second plugin, the fractal glass effect. The inspiration for this plugin came from some of the visuals I'd seen in popular mainstream media, like this poster for Ripley and a few other tech products I'd tried. In terms of the plugin experience, the user begins by first selecting the image that they want the effect applied to. From there, they can adjust the strength of the effect. The higher the strength, the more the number of vertical ribs on the effect. And as soon as the user clicks create, a new image is created on the canvas with the effect. Now, in order to create this effect, you begin by vertically slicing the image. The number of vertical slices is proportional to the strength that the user sets for the effect. And once the image is sliced up, the fill for each of the slices is displaced and scaled down horizontally. And for this plugin, I primarily use the create rectangle function to create those vertical slices, and image paint to perform the displacement and scaling operations on the fill. Now let's see how this works in code. So this is where we have our plugin. As soon as I select the image, you can see a preview of the effect being applied. If I bump up the strength, you can see the number of vertical ribs go up. And once I hit create, a new image is created on the canvas with the effect applied. Thank you. And then if you look at the code, this is where most of those slicing, displacement, and scaling operations happen. Here's create rectangle, which is responsible for those vertical slices that you see in the effect. Here's image paint, which performs the scaling down and the displacement operations. And in addition to displacement and scaling, Image Paint also allows us to manipulate some of the other fill properties, like saturation, exposure, tint. So let's play around with some of those. Let's see what happens if I change the saturation, actually the exposure, to be a little lower. And you immediately see that the plugin updated the preview. The effect is still applied, but the fill now has much lower exposure. Like The fill is a little more dull. Let's undo that. Let's see what happens if we completely bring down the saturation on this effect. And that basically gives us a black and white image, because we completely removed all the color with that negative saturation. Let's see what happens if we bump up the tint. And that gives a very vibrant fill with those enhanced pinks and purples. Kind of like this. I think I'm going to keep this change. So with this last demo, we're at the end of my talk. I hope this gave everyone a sense of how simple it is to create these plugins and highlighted the opportunities to create more such plugins so ultimately designers can work a little better, a little faster. Thank you, everyone.